Well, hello, everybody. This is Stella from Better Life. You know, this morning I had an amazing call with one of my mentors, Clarice Fluitz, and she was responding to a post that I had done uh, regarding occupation and territory. And one of the things I said in that video was that the souls that are coming into the kingdom are on the land that we have not occupied. And so it's very important. Good morning, good morning, good morning as you get on there. Uh, Miss Peggy, thank you so much. Come on in, come on in. Go ahead and share the post because I'm going to be talking, this will be really quick about how significant it is. And we've been talking for the last several days about uh, an online class that I'm going to be doing. It's a Bible study for the, book of, uh, in, in, for the month of June. And we're going to be talking about the three harvests of the end times. One of those harvests is the harvest, it is, go ahead and share, it is the harvest of territory. Hi Lisa, the harvest of territory. Now what do I mean by that? In order for the transition to happen, and we realize that this whole coronavirus has been about, I'm great Lisa, it has been about, hello Sandra, go ahead and share this video. The coronavirus has been about shifting and shaking so that things can fall. And the Word of God says that in this in this hour that God would allow things to be shaken. So that and we think that things are shaken and falling them apart, but in reality, what's happening is as things have been shaken, they're falling into place. Now, what has to fall into place for Matthew twenty four fourteen to transpire? The Word of God says that in Matthew twenty four fourteen that the gospel of the kingdom must be preached to be a witness. Okay, so that word witness is essential because witness means that all of a sudden somebody else can see something that's transpired. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of the kingdom of God coming in. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom of God coming in. The gospel, so the good news of the kingdom. So we're not talking about what's going to happen between now and the Antichrist and all of that. That's going to transpire. But what I'm talking about is the kingdom that will arise on the other side of that snapshot, that little sliver of time that most church folk is all scared about. they scared, oh, you know, the mark of the beast and the Antichrist and the end time. Folks, that's just a byword, okay? Because when you start realizing that the kingdom that's on the other side of that little sliver of time is what is being established when God said he was shaking things, he is shaking everything up to start moving stuff out of the way, getting things in position for that to transpire. Okay, so we're talking about when Jesus Christ comes back. He comes the, the rapture, yeah, that's gonna happen. But then he's gonna come back with his church to establish his kingdom. So what is happening now is shaking things up, not for the Antichrist, but really getting things in position for the establishment of that rule. Now, before that happens, one of the things that has to transpire so that it will be a witness to the world. Okay. Because in order for somebody to, for you, for the kingdom of God to get the, get influence over somebody else, influence changes the way people look at things. Okay. That's why when you look in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says the poor man's wisdom was despised. Why? Because his life didn't give a testimony that was worthy of creating influence because what he knew obviously wasn't working for him. He knew stuff. He had knowledge of stuff, but it wasn't working. So what we're talking about is when the shaking takes place, it brings into position those individuals who are marked to occupy territory. There are people in the kingdom of God who are marked to occupy territory. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to own that land, but it does mean that you are the territorial spirit that needs to go and occupy that land for the kingdom of God. Now, we, we're familiar with territorial spirits. We realize that there are demonic entities that are assigned to turf. But what we don't realize is that you are a territorial spirit. That God is a territorial spirit. God is the ultimate territorial spirit. And what he needs you to do in this third, in this end time harvest, there are three of them. The harvest of territory, the harvest of soul, and the harvest of wealth. What God needs for us to do is to realize, to bow up, stand up, and show up for your territory. That I was on a phone call with a friend of mine just now. She was telling me about a, a particular liquor store on a street that she has to walk to walk past going to her business and I told her I said I said she said every time I walk by it key her name is Keisha Keisha I hope you're near 
Every time I walked by, it would bother me. It would bother her. It was troubling her. I said, the reason it is troubling you is because you are the king and the, 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 the kingdom agent who God has given that territory to. And it's going to bother you because you're not occupying the space that you have been out, that you have been assigned to in heaven. So what you're going to have to do is you have to walk that land. Just like God told the children of Israel, he said, he told me, he said, you go walk around Jericho and you put, you go just walk around, follow our instructions. He told Joshua, every place on which your foot shall tread, I've given it to you. Now he's not giving you territory for your own possession. He's giving you territory for kingdom possession so that the territory and that, so at that particular corner and that liquor store where the people were, would go buy their liquor instead of taking their liquor home and drink, they're standing in the parking lot, standing on the street corner, drinking liquor, getting drunk. And the devil is a lie. And so I told her, you occupy that territory. You are the, you are the spiritual entity that God has assigned to take that territory. And you must occupy the territory he has assigned to you. Now, he's given each of us territory. Now, until you occupy territory on all territory, there are souls and lives waiting to come into the kingdom. But until you occupy the territory, you won't have access to the souls that live there. And so for churches, this is a word for churches. It's really important. And in fact, I believe that, and I'm going to go as far as to say, I believe this is a word from God. Between now and Pentecost, because what happened at Pentecost? When the Holy Ghost fell and, and, and they, they thought that they were drunk, okay? They came out and Peter preached a sermon and 3,000 people were born again in a day. Can you imagine what would happen if the average church got an infusion of 3,000 people in one day? So what we have to do as a kingdom of God is posture ourselves for managing and once you start to occupy that territory. So what's step one? Step one, somebody can somebody type this in there for me so that we can capture this as it's coming because it's coming really fast by the spirit. Step one, you have to recognize that you are a territorial spirit, that God is a territorial spirit, and you and I are made in the image and likeness of God. And God, he sent, he even, he even put Adam and Eve in the garden to what? Recover territory. He says, you take this, I'm putting you here, you're going to subdue, you take dominion. You, you, he says, you take dominion, you subdue, you bring this territory, this earth realm that I am putting you in charge of you take authority you take dominion you occupy this territory so number one every believer must realize that you are a territorial spirit made in the image of your heavenly father who is the ultimate territorial spirit and the number one end time harvest that has to happen at this juncture is you and I must go out get out of your church and go occupy your territory walk your streets walk your neighborhoods walk your blocks and begin to decree and proclaim that this territory and every soul that occupies it belongs to the kingdom of God. I claim every person in my neighborhood from one end of my street to the next end of my street. I proclaim that this is kingdom territory. I complain, I proclaim this one square mile radius. Whatever the spirit of God tells you to occupy, you have to decree it into existence. You walk that territory and claim it for the kingdom of God. That's number one. So realize that you are territorial spirit. Realize that you have been given authority to occupy territory. Realize that God is also a territorial spirit and he needs you to take your territory because the authority that Jesus took when he went to the cross, he gave it to you. He gave it to me. It belongs to us. And we have to exercise our authority and take and occupy our territory. And so we have to evict those who are unlawfully on your land. Those demonic entities that are who we've been, we've been over the years, you're talking about the territorial spirit, girl, that territorial spirit, we got this block. You are the territorial spirit because you are not only a spirit being, but you have a body and you have a soul and you have a mouth and you can decree like the, but, but the demon that's on that land can't make a decree. He can't prophesy to a land. He can't do it. You can Pastor, you can get out of your church, go walk your city, put your mask on, walk your city and prophesy to the territory that God has given to you. Because on that land are the souls that you and I will be reaping and bringing into the kingdom.
okay? There are three harvests of the end times. The number one harvest is the harvest of territory. You and I must take our territory. We got to walk it. We've got to, we're not doing it for ourselves. We are doing it for the kingdom of God. You and I, we are kingdom agents, okay? Occupy your territory. Your territorial spirit, God is a territorial spirit, and territorial spirits must occupy territory. What is your turf? Lame your turf. Walk your turf. Anoint your turf. Take a bottle of oil, a blessed, and begin to walk that territory and scatter that oil and say, in the name of Jesus, every place on which my feet shall tread, God has given it to me. I'm taking this territory and claiming it for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am claiming this turf for the Lord. Now, once you take the territory, then you can't just take the territory and leave it blank. Years ago, when I lived in Southern California, I lived in a city called Culver City. And on one side, there was a street called Culver Boulevard, and the townhouse that I had rented was on Culver Boulevard. Now, there was an intersection at this particular street, and on that side of the street was Sony Pictures Studio, and it was beautiful, and it was lush and green, and there was a on the street, the traffic came one way, and then there was an island in the middle, and the traffic went the other way. And so in that island on that side of the street, it was beautiful. There was biking trails and palm trees and walkways. And I remember when I first moved into that townhouse, I would take my son. He was about two years old, put him in the stroller. And we would go walking up past toward the Sony Picture Studio side where it was really pretty. And it, was, it looked safe. And, it was, and I would walk, I'd walk that block on that side. And then I'd come back on the side where I had just moved. And people would put their furniture in the middle of the island and they they were dumping garbage and old tires. And I remember walking out of there one day going, God, I don't like this. This is wrong. Why is it beautiful over there? And then over on this side where I live, it looks like garbage. And the island is ugly. And there's they, this big, be big stretch of land. And it's all it goes all the way down to the ocean. And it's ugly. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, prophesy to it. And so what I started doing was walking on my side of the street, on my, where the intersection was. I started going to my side, and I would walk all the way down. I walked my son in the stroller all the way down, looking at the old furniture, and the and the people would, the, the homeless people would go and build fires, and they would have fires, and so you wait you have this burn up furniture and all of this mess in the middle of the street. And so you got traffic on this side, traffic on this side. You got all this garbage in the middle. And I began to prophesy. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I decree that the biking trail on the other side by Sony Picture Studio, they're going to bring it all the way down. I thank you, Lord. I see palm trees and I see beautiful flower beds. And Lord, I see the bike lanes. And it was a lot of land within a year. Of me making those declarations, the city of Culver Boulevard passed a... Passed a whatever, and they extended the biking trail from Sony Pictures Studio all the way down to the Pacific Ocean so that you could now ride a bike. So that ugly place that had, that where it was when I moved there was completely renovated. They cleared all the garbage out. They planted trees there. They put, they paved a, a four-lane bike trail. So you had two lanes going this way and two lanes going that way. So you could go down one side of the road going to trap and you could come back up the other side and you got this beautiful lush garden. That is what God, when he told Adam and Eve and he moved them into the garden, he said, occupy this land. That is an example of modern day occupation of territory that you and I get to claim. Once you occupy the territory, the next thing you have to do is tell it what it is going to be. You tell that land what you're going to become. You tell when he brought the animals in front of Adam and he said, named them. He wasn't just giving them a name. He was assigning to them their nature. He was telling that animal what you're going to bring forth in the earth. When you occupy that land, you tell that building where the liquor store is. You're going to be an educational center. You're going to be a you you prophesy to it. You done you, you take it, Sharon, we take the land. You go to the places where the enemy has done devastation and you and I must rise up. We are God's children, Tiana. We are the kings. Tiana, I'm proud of you. You just occupy territory. Walk your land and prophesy to it and tell it what it's going to be. You tell it what, and everything around your house, Tiana, you go. If there's something around your house that you just 
press button or proud of you that you don't like, you go prophesy to it and tell it, no, in Jesus' name, this liquor store not going to stay here. No, they're not going to change the zoning over here and do this. You tell it what it's going to be. You occupy not just the land that you just bought, but you occupy the area around it and you prophesy to it and tell it what it's supposed to be, Louise. That is who we are. We are territorial spirits made in the image and likeness of our Father. And we are supposed to occupy land. If you look at, those, if you look at the story of the children of Israel, all throughout their history, it was about them taking the land that God had given them. It was about them occupying the land that he had given them. It was about them being territorial spirits themselves. You are the territorial spirit. They get to say, no, mm -mm. no, they're not going to put no, 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 uh, no, one of those buildings where they, where they, you go and you get all of your sex toys and all of that stuff. You're not bringing it here. You're not going to bring and set up a location for sex trafficking in my neighborhood. The devil is a lie. Not going to happen in Jesus name. I take authority over that, but it's not enough to take authority over it and leave it empty. You have to prophesy to it and tell it what it's supposed to be. If you don't know what it's supposed to be, that's where the power of the Holy Spirit comes in because God has a vision and an image for everything in this earth and everything God sees is good. He can share with you his ideas of what he wants you to release in the earth and what, what you are supposed to do with the territory that you occupy. So number one, you are territorial spirit. Take your territory. Do understand that you are good, good, good. You are well able to take this territory. Like Joshua and Caleb said to the other, they said, let's go into this land. Let's occupy. We are well able. Don't let your governor stand up and do stuff and strip you of your rights. You bow up and say in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the spirit that's operating through governor so-and-so. We bind that demon. We bring it down. And in Jesus' name, he, they will come under the influence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They will hear the voice of the good shepherd and the voice of a stranger will not follow. They will listen to the things that are best for the people. And that's what they will do. And if they won't do it in Jesus' name, the word of God says that the wicked will be rooted out of that. Out of the, you are the territorial spirit and you must speak to it speak to it. I'm proud of our governor here in the state of Mississippi. People talk about Mississippi, but we got some good things going on down here. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of the decisions that he's made. I believe he's heard from God and that the decisions that he's making are good and for the best interest, interest of the state of Mississippi. I'm proud of our president for being bold enough to take that, to take that hydroxychloroquine himself and be an example. And so I decree over his body. He will live long and strong to fulfill his purpose and do what God has called him to do. You have to prophesy to the land that you have been given. We don't have to bow up, bow down and, and yield to some of the stuff that's going. You deal with it in the spirit. You deal with the principalities and the powers, those territorial spirits that have established themselves. You get to evict them off the land because God wants to bless people. He wants to prosper them. He wants to manifest his love for them. He doesn't want people bound. He doesn't want us to lose our rights in this country so that we lose the freedoms that enable us to have creative expression and to launch businesses. And to, he don't want you to lose all of that. But we have to prophesy. We are the territorial spirits that must take authority over those entities who are coming and endeavoring to rob us of all of that. Now, there is a window of time that we are given because we do have a government, a kingdom that will become, that Jesus will come back and establish his kingdom, his coming. That's the kingdom that's coming. And the spirit that's endeavoring to raise up before that happens is the Antichrist spirit. And that spirit will be put down, defeated, and wiped out. It's a sidebar. But until then, you and I, as believers, as people who name the name of Christ, we have an assignment. You cannot be afraid. You must be bold in your faith. There are three harvests. The first harvest is a harvest of territory. You have to occupy your territory. Get up. 
Walk your land. Walk your cities. Begin to look at those places in your cities that are not being used to what for, to, to the advantage of the people. You prophesy to them. You prophesy to that empty parking lot where the people are throwing trash and garbage. And you tell it what it's going to be. And before you know it, you'll see a community garden there. You'll see it cleaned off. You prophesy to that empty boarded up building and tell it what it's before you what it's supposed to be. And before you know it, somebody will buy it. And then they'll have a public, a, a, a charter school there so that the children in your school, in your neighborhood, get access to a charter school within walks, blocks of where they live. They can walk to school. You prophesy to it. And whatever God has deposited in your heart, in your vision, for you, you prophesy to it. You speak to the land. You speak to the territory. You speak to the turf. Because everything, every inch of land on this earth is under the influence of a territorial spirit. Now, the question is, is are you as a territorial spirit occupying the land that has been assigned to your life? Are you, pastor, as a territorial spirit occupying the land that has been assigned to your church? Are your members occupying that land? Why is that significant? Because there are people and souls on that territory. And the harvest of souls will happen after the people who, uh, who have the authority occupy the land for the kingdom of God. So that you can now walk on that land and reap the harvest of souls. You can spiritually walk on that land and reap the harvest of souls that are living there. That's what ha has to happen. And it's going to happen. The question is, is it going to happen with you or without you? Is it going to happen because of you or in spite of you? Is it going to happen through you? Or are you going to watch somebody else do what you are supposed to be doing? And then the end of it all, when you stand before Christ and have to give an account for your life, will you be able to say, I took my territory? He said, I took my talents that you gave me. And I built a city with it. I took my talents that you gave me and I doubled them. I took my talents that you gave me and I multiplied it a thousandfold. I did what you told me. What are you going to do with your territory? Go get your land. Go walk your turf. Go claim your territory. Not for yourself. Not just for you, but for the kingdom of God. How much territory can you see? How much faith do you have? If you'll take action and do something, go walk your territory, walk, walk around your property and just say in Jesus name from now on, I release this property and I, I, I claim it for the kingdom of God. Every person who comes on this property becomes the property of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. When they leave my house, they leave with an angel walking them into their divine set, their divine destiny. What you got, you talk, you, you're a speaking spirit. You're a territorial spirit. You get to say those things and decree them into existence. We got to do that because God, Jesus is coming back. And the question is, how many people are going to take them? I'm claiming this United States of America. I am saying that over 300 million Americans will call upon the name of the Lord. And when they call on his name, they will be saved. Joel chapter 2. We did it. Yes, Jackie. Jackie said she walked that she walked her territory Saturday. Jackie just got a new house. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you and Tianda. You guys are new homeowners. Pay that sucker off quick. Don't be paying no mortgage for 30 years. I'm so glad you guys came on here You for, to, to be with me on this quick video. You're going to be hearing me talk a lot about this. I've got a summer online Bible study. It is the three harvest of the end time. There are three. The harvest of souls, the harvest of territory, and the harvest of wealth. Now this week we're going to really be talking about the harvest of territory. Claiming your territory. Why? Because on your territory there is wealth and souls that you are supposed to reap. That's how you do it. Love you guys. Thank you so much. If you want more information on that, I'll share a link with this video. Get on there, click on the link, and get all the details. Hi, Davida. Thank you guys for being with me. Till next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.